Hi friends, uh, I'm Piyali and I welcome you all to the first episode of the pre-conference uh, webinar series for upcoming Discuss Agile conference in Chennai. Today's speaker is uh, Sridharan Vembu and today he will be talking about the Agile variant that works in our startup. So Sridhar, over to you. Let us know more about your topic. Thank, thanks, Piali, and good evening, everyone uh, who has tuned in. Um, so let me begin uh, with a disclaimer. Uh, so the topic says uh, I'm going to talk about Agile variant that works in a startup purely based on my own personal experience. And, and this pre-conference event, it, it's not going to be a dry run uh, for the actual conference talk. So this is more about uh, preparing yourself in terms of uh, once you are attending the conference, what is that you will be hearing from me? This is more of uh, uh, introduction or, or sort of a precursor to the session. Uh, otherwise, it, it will be a repetition uh, that I'll be talking the same thing in the conference, uh, and you you might 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 choose to skip that also. So it, it is intentional. So don't blame me uh, if you don't hear the 10 or 15 things. Uh, that you should consider while uh, okay you want to implement agile methodology at what variant that would work if you are working in a startup environment okay so with that uh, i'm going to begin uh, with a very quick introduction about myself so uh, you can relate to why i chose this topic and, and then how am i qualified to talk about this topic so i i'm in this industry uh, for close to 19 years now, uh, been in different type of organizations, uh, services industry, uh, product industry, uh, been part of very big enterprise uh, MNC kind of organizations, mid-size organizations, and right now I am heading the engineering function in a fintech startup uh, based out of Chennai. Play different roles, uh, being a domain specialist, being a technologist uh, at different capacities with the technology uh, layer. Uh, I've been a delivery guy for longer period uh, in, in these 19 years. I've done client partner type of a role, the uh, farming aspect of uh, any any account relationship. And right now, uh, as head of engineering, I am one of the C-level guys uh, in, in my current startup. And another uh, tidbit is, is I have never been an agile coach. Uh, outside of uh, the program or the delivery uh, engagement that I had managed. And I don't know if, if I ever will uh, play an agile coach role in the near future also, right? So with that, let me begin. Uh, more, more these days, I'm, I'm hearing the uh, topics around scaling agile, uh, enterprise agile transformations, uh, there are newer frameworks that are coming up or, or there are frameworks with uh, multiple variants targeting different segments primarily focused on these large scale enterprises and, and so on. There are certifications around that uh, as well. Uh, at the same time, uh, to the best of my knowledge, I, I haven't come across too many articles or too many people discussing about uh, the startup ecosystem when it comes to agile implementation. Uh, probably because, and this is my view, and you, you may differ from the view that I have, uh, startups are generally believed to be a bit more dynamic uh, and a bit more chaotic at, at certain uh, level uh, to, to follow any process, let alone agile, right? I mean, is, is there going to be any process-driven approach uh, in a startup? Uh, let's say it, it, it's a product startup, and uh, there are too many challenges, too many surprises uh, when you start beginning your work on a given day because you need to respond to the market, you need to respond to your customer or consumer needs. It depends on which domain your uh, product startup is or even a service services startup business and to the best of my knowledge again uh, I haven't come across too many services startups uh, there are 
I mean, if, if I have to split the percentage of startups, especially in India, there are more on the product side. Uh, so I'm I'm going to focus uh, the rest of the session more on the product ecosystem, so that you you can contextualize that if you are being part of one of those product startups. And the second aspect that I think why uh, agile or any other methodology, not too many people are trying out. Uh, startups usually rely on heroes be it a functional uh, expertise or technical expertise or somebody who is extremely strong in a business or a, a, a business domain basically and agile uh, doesn't work too well when the ecosystem like be it the whole product ecosystem or the engineering or the it uh, software aspect of it is built around heroes uh, because agile believes i mean if you relate to the Agile Manifesto, uh, while it talks about people over processes, uh, this is not about heroes. This is about how people collaborate among themselves and how people work together as a team and then complement or support each other. Uh, so with, with those two primary aspects that I think why uh, people don't talk too much about making Agile work in a startup environment, because I mean, this is more like okay, whatever works on, on that given day, on that given month, and, and whatever gives me more revenue, and whatever makes me run in the forward direction, I am fine with that. I don't need to worry about do I need to follow a specific development methodology or, or a, a product uh, roadmap or a methodology there, or I'll, I'll just go with the flow just to make it work. Uh, so having said that, uh, it it might appear as a great fertile ground for the agile coaches i mean the today's agile coaches uh, for a couple of reasons right one the startup ecosystem i mean if i take any startup uh, the overall team size is going to be pretty handful uh, i i can't think of a startup there are exceptions outliers of course uh, i'm not going to name them but Typically, when, when you think of or talk about a startup, it, it is in the range of 100, 150, max 200 people. So it is easy uh, to bring in any change and, and then try to influence this limited set of people compared to trying to do an enterprise-wise agile transformation or uh, having to go through the hierarchical structure and, and then multiple layers within the organization, multiple functions within the organization. And the second uh, advantage agile coaches might have is uh, direct access to the c level or uh, you, know, you are going to talk to the founders uh, almost every day uh, so if you want to push any changes top down it is going to be far more easier for you and if you think of it from that aspect of while agile coaches might like to work in a uh, startup kind of an environment but at the same time, uh, based on my experience, uh, like my direct experience, as well as uh, from the people that I have seen in my network, it, it's going to be equally difficult and challenging for you to bring in any change. Uh, there, there are like a number of reasons uh, that, that are there. Uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm, I'm not going to dwell too much into the specific variant are okay these are all the 5 10 15 20 things that i have tried and then i have made that work and then that is something you can uh, have as a takeaway to try in your environment that that is something i'm definitely going to talk about uh, during the uh, conference but this is more like a precursor like i said in the beginning uh, so there are a number of questions uh, that came to my mind uh, when i decided to join a product and a fintech startup after spending uh, so many years uh, working when like an enterprise mid-level uh, sort of well-established organizations uh, and and these sort of draw me into making the right calls what agile variant that will work in an enterprise sorry in a, in a startup uh, ecosystem or a startup culture so i'm, I'm going to just uh, spend a uh, few minutes on each of those questions that that I have uh, asked myself and then which I have listed for uh, this session. 
and you can stop me at any point if you have your own point of view on any of these questions or if you want me to elaborate or explain a little more about why i consider this question relevant that particular question relevant in in this context okay um, so first of all the the first and foremost question that i would ask is is it a bootstrap startup versus there are investors like a vc funding or anything uh, that that had flown in if it is being invested for example uh, what stage of the fundraising the startup or the companies and and i am sure if if you have worked in a startup environment you would be familiar with the uh, seed uh, series a series b kind of funding the various levels of funding uh, based on your vision roadmap and then which stage of the particular product development you are in and how involved are the investors that is again a very key question that you need to ask uh, in terms of how much of a free hand the founders and by extension if you are a c level guy or if you are uh, even a decision maker uh, one of those decision maker how much of a free hand that you are going to have in making certain decisions some of those decisions could be uh, like completely radical and and then change the course uh, that you have set in for yourself in a product in uh, like a startup environment so you you need to understand the involvement of the investors as well as uh, the clarity and and then the free hand that the founders and then by extension the c level guys are having if it is going to be a investment uh, invested startup so that is that is the first set of questions that i would want uh, you to think about or ponder about uh, the second uh, set is more around how old or rather how mature is the particular startup organization is for example is it too early to bring in any change or is it too early to talk about change i mean something is not working uh, something is working or, or i need to uh, bring in certain uh, aspects that i need to change so it, it depends on which stage of the uh, maturity level this particular uh, startup is in uh, there could be an existent crisis i mean there was like a great vision and and then there was a uh, okay this is the brighter idea that i'm going to change the market you might have started with that uh, mindset but probably 2 months 6 months down the line uh, you find yourself uh, in an existent crisis so then you don't have time to think about okay any change right because you need you need to survive probably in the next few months for you to even think about uh, bringing in any change let alone uh, doing an agile transformation for, or anything like that uh, you are cruising along too well uh, and so you don't need to bring in any change this is like too good to be true at, at least in my experience because there are going to be obviously challenges roadblocks so you will always be in a situation where uh, you would have some surprises like i said in the beginning you will uh, find newer challenges almost every day so you need to be prepared for which one i need to quickly react versus which one okay they would be there but i don't need to bother too much about it i am aware of it but i don't need to react quickly to that but the most likely scenario uh, you know you are moving forward as an organization as a team uh, there are certain things that are broken so you need to bring in certain changes hoping that these things uh, will get addressed will get fixed so that you can let let's say move much faster or, or you can go in the right direction so on so forth and and the parent question to all these is like i said how mature your organization is so that you can evaluate what is the change that i need to do is it the right time to bring in the change uh, and so on so forth and the domain of this particular uh, start is also very important are you in a retail uh, domain are you in a fintech domain are you dealing only with big data or are you more focused on the iot space so your challenges your market uh, condition your competition uh, your consumer needs everything will be different depends on which domain you are going to be in uh, so accordingly the 
agile methodology or the agile variant that you need to adopt also might vary so domain is one of the most important aspects that you need to consider uh, the other one uh, you might think why it is even relevant but i found it relevant so i put it there so you can question or you can share your point of view uh, is it is it a sole founder uh, run organization startup or there are more than one uh, founders uh, there is this is like an altogether different topic why it is always recommended to have more than one founder and not uh, in a startup where there is only one founder for a number of reasons i'm not going to go into that uh, but there are some points why, why related points that i want to bring in uh, in terms of the core competencies the strengths even the personality types of each of these uh, let's say you have three founders or four founders uh, what competencies each one is bringing to the table what are their strengths i'm not focusing on their weakness you you need to focus on the strengths comp competencies and, and then the personality types and how well they are complementing each other how well they are supporting each other because that is very important for you to bring in any change right that that is uh, one of the core aspects that we need to focus on and what are the primary focus areas of each of these founders as individuals and as collectives also because individuals may have different focus areas depending on the role that they are playing in depending on the competency that they are bringing in but as a collective there has to be one or if there are more than one primary focus areas then everybody needs to be aligned i'm talking about the founders right now so then that will percolate down into the other levels also and what is the success criteria i mean what what would define okay i have succeeded i mean it doesn't need to be the end of the journey even during the journey uh, if you talk about the milestones uh, where you were measure okay am i am i successful till this point or i'm not as successful as i wanted to be or am i a total failure so you need to be clear in terms of what are all the success criteria for each of these founders again and then what is the collective success criteria as well and the most important thing is are they courageous enough and when when somebody starts a startup people see or uh, people call them yeah you are courageous enough to be on your own uh, to to begin your journey on the entrepreneurial uh, world but am i just courageous enough to just create a startup or am i habitually courageous enough to make bold decisions to think of some of the impossible aspects that i otherwise would not do uh, if i am not courageous enough so because this is very important even to to bring in a subtle change uh, as as subtle as uh, le le let's uh, for example right uh, just just to give you a little context uh, from from my own experience if if you are a hierarchical organization even in a startup uh, that that's not bad but if if somebody comes and tells you hierarchy doesn't work in this particular context you need to go completely flat uh, and one of the uh, founders believe in that uh, particular argument then he or she should be courageous enough to make sure that like from a hierarchical to a flat organization uh, is being rolled out in in whatever is the reasonable time period that is one one relevant example uh, which which i can explain uh, if if you have uh, more questions on that uh, moving on uh, we need to understand the organizational culture uh, as well as the structure like like i said uh, is it hierarchical or is it like a flat uh, flat structure that uh, the product uh, startup is is built the degree of feedback is it like 90 degrees is it 180 360 or any other angle how open and how frequent the feedbacks are happening how uh, willingly people are sharing their feedback both like i said right if it is going to be a 360 or a 540 kind of a, a feedback cycle uh, then you you should be ready to accept feedback 
even even hard feedbacks from your customers from your investors uh, consumers and all all stakeholders that you are dealing with and the other aspect how happy and engaged are your employees uh, because this this is more important not just in a startup environment in any organization uh, even, even more uh, specific in a startup culture because if you are having too much of a churn rate uh, you would be fixing a problem which no longer should exist rather than focusing on am i building the right product am i tapping into the right market segment am i addressing the uh, right consumer needs so on so forth so keeping employees happy and engaged uh, and minimizing or making the churn rate to near zero is very crucial and then that depends a lot on the organizational structure and the cultural aspects moving on uh, let me just check if there are any questions uh, and purely please stop me uh, if there are any questions from people uh, or if, if anybody wants me to re-explain any of those points that i already discussed okay okay Shridhar. i'm checking on the question part good thanks okay. and moving moving on uh, we need to understand uh, there are various functions in the organization right for example uh, you will have your business division you will have your sales division uh, product it uh, if, if you are uh, into a fintech startup like mine uh, then we will have uh, assisted job support channel also uh, so it, you you will have different functions in an organization every everything is important but but we need to understand which one are if it is more than one which of the functional areas are too critical for the success of the organization i mean everything is important if you look at it uh, from a perspective of supporting each other and then moving forward but without one specific function firing all guns uh, no matter how efficient the other functions are you are certain of failing so you need to identify which one or two are those critical functions and then you need to make sure everything is wired around these two one or two functions so that you are going in the right direction because that is very very crucial very important when when you talk about bringing in change bringing in agile bringing in process methodology anything related to that and competency again of each of these teams right from who is heading this team to the last member in the team uh, th that is again very important because uh, you cannot always push changes top down no matter uh, how small or big the size of the organization is it, it has to work both ways so it is very important uh, that you need to have the right competency levels at all stages like like right from the head till the last member in the team the other aspect in my mind is the market competition uh, are you going into the market with a completely disruptive or a radical idea or you see like a pie of the large customer base uh, out there and then you you are aiming for a particular section of this uh, customer base uh, so there are obviously more competitors so the, the focus would be how am i going to differentiate myself how am i going to do better in terms of customer service in terms of the product features uh, response time so on so forth so you, you need to analyze is it going to be the pioneer or am I, am I one among many but still i have my own usp uh, that that again plays a very crucial role uh, in in deciding the uh, transformation or the agile journey and then the next related aspect is how am i how are my customers or the consumers uh, seeing me uh, for example if if i am into a b2b kind of a business uh, am i getting the right seat uh, in the table when when there are other partners uh, customer or consumer view of uh, your organization or the startup uh, 
why this is important like, like i begin uh, you need to have the right seat at a table uh, when when you are uh, customers i mean when i talk about customers this is more relevant in a b2b kind of a context where obviously your customer would want to look at the options that he or she has and if your competitor is uh, there in in any of those strategic meetings or discussions uh, you you make sure that you have a seat in in the same meeting uh, in in the same room otherwise uh, that itself tells you that uh, you are not that relevant compared to your competitor uh, from the eyes of your consumer or the customer and how strong your founders network is and, and that is again very crucial and are you guys knocking too many doors uh, in the want of uh, growing your business or marketing your product or trying to get the traction uh, how aggressive your sales team is and how aggressive uh, successful they are in terms of converting i mean knocking too many doors is not a bad thing but how many of those doors are open and then how deep you can go into the house so that is also a very crucial aspect being a startup uh, i won't be surprised if you are uh, customers especially uh, the big customers are they bullying you are they trying to take advantage of you uh, because you you need business with them uh, so you are uh, you are in a place where they can demand and then they can sort of dictate at some times but are you yielding to those pressures or are you strong enough in terms of i am confident in my idea so i don't need to uh, listen to you or say yes to you all the time just because uh, you you are in a position where you can demand uh, so th there are these subtle aspects of it uh, that we need to be careful about just because i want to grow just because i want to establish uh, my product in the market uh, it, it would be a wrong uh, strategy or, or sort of a suicidal mission agree to anything and everything uh, that one big customer uh, asks you or demands you so that that needs to be uh, planned played out very very carefully <laughs> and other important or, or very crucial aspect is how concrete or fluid your uh, product roadmap is and are you in a position to quickly adapt to changing market needs i mean am i building something which is too rigid uh, because that that can happen depends on uh the the kind of team that you are recruiting and the kind of team that you are building so you need to make sure uh your product roadmap is uh, if not too concrete it shouldn't be too fluid also and uh, in terms of the uh, system wiring it, it needs to be nimble enough and it needs to be flexible enough uh, I mean, not too flexible again, but it needs to be flexible enough in terms of adapting to the changing market needs. Uh, another important aspect on, on this topic is, are you trying out too many things at the same time? Uh, so you, you want to juggle as many balls in the air and then see uh, if, if I can catch, let's say 50% of them at least, yeah, I'm, I'm not, uh, in a bad position compared to i'm just throwing one ball in the air I'm, I'm not able to catch even that so my loss rate or the failure rate is 100 percent versus it, the, the percentage is evening out if i'm juggling too many balls that would be a very wrong or a bad strategy if if you don't have the control on these multiple parallel tracks that you are trying out at the same time so you need to be very careful uh, and and that comes in uh, from a number of factors depends on like i said in the beginning uh, how how strong uh, or what competency level your founders are bringing onto the table uh, the competency level of the fun different functions and the members of the team and what is the clarity in terms of the market what is the competition in the market what is the problem that i am trying to solve why am i solving this uh, am i the right one in solving it in the best 
way possible so if you answer all of these questions and then uh, you are confident about yeah you are on the right track then it, it gives you the confidence i don't need to try too many things uh, to to have an insurance in case of if one fails then the other is going to bail me out so you need to be careful there and the second aspect like i said uh, how complex your system wiring is done uh, am i building it too rigid to make even a, a simple change and, and you are probably going to lose out if you are taking too much time to make a small change uh, that your customer wants you to do uh, what is the primary focus of the product uh, and, and then the uh, it system as well is it like faster releases so that uh, i am able to deliver more things uh, in a, in a quicker pace or i want to make sure even if i take uh, some extra time i am delivering quality so customer is always uh, sure about whenever i deliver something it is uh, as per their expectation and then they don't need to worry about the uh, back and forth cycle of okay this is not working that is not what i want that the, the feedback loop or the feedback cycle is more frequent if you are only focusing on how much i can uh, how fast i can run versus am i running in the right pace with the right quality and and things like that other aspect am i doing too many customizations uh, it goes back to uh the point around if if there are one or two customers that are more demanding uh they can go into a level of if you don't do the specific customization for me which is going to be very trivial uh, but they just wanted to show that they are in command and then they want to bully you uh, and if you are going to do too much of the customization into your project into your product then then you are uh, inviting failure then and there uh you you need to be convinced about if i am making this customization can i monetize this particular change from let's say few other customers and that's where the wiring is very important in terms of how the inner working between your functions are being uh, wired so that you you can immediately see uh, th this is something i can sell into a, another customer Uh, and it it is not a wasted effort in terms of making a specific customization for only one customer uh, moving on you need to be clear about what are all the channels that uh, that i am going to launch and then i am going to support in the short medium and long run uh, just because everybody has a android app ios app do i really need to build an app or is it best uh, served even with the uh, responsive mobile uh, version of the desktop app uh, and what is going to be the stickiness what is going to be the need uh, for building multiple channels uh, that you will get a clarity if if you know well enough uh, what is the product that i'm building in what is the market segment that i am addressing what are my core competencies and what is that my customers or consumers would expect from my product so everything that i talked about so far everything is uh, dependent or coupled and and these are not discrete points that that i have put together so you need to be clear about what are the channels that i need to support that i'm going to support and once you decide that okay these are the two or three channels that i need to uh, support you need to be clear about the yield between these channels and are you ready are you courageous enough to shut down one channel if the expected yield is not coming over a consistent period of time and how quickly you can bring up a new channel if you see there is a potential there is a need so this again goes back to your system wiring and and how clear your product road map is other important aspect do you want to do everything in house or is there a strategy that you have in place to choose the right implementation partner uh, be it like one channel let, let this particular partner develop and then give it to me i don't need to invest too much time and uh, manpower on that versus this is something very core very uh, ip 
driven uh, that I don't want to divulge to uh, any other implementation partner. They might turn into a competitor in future. So you, you need to be clear about uh, making the right choices, making the right decisions uh, when it comes to choosing something that you want to do in-house versus something you want to do uh, with a channel partner kind of a setup. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, that that I wanted to talk about uh, in, in, in this particular session. Uh, like I said, in the actual talk that I'm going to connect all these questions uh, to the aspect of what is the Agile variant that I came up with uh, after trying to answer almost all of these questions myself and then talking to people in my organization and then what aspect of those variant works well for me and what customization that i had to do what course correction that i need to make uh, my 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 view is you can pretty much extend most of them if not all of them and you can adopt in your specific context and organization but but keep, keep it in mind this is from a product startup ecosystem that, that I'm going to talk about. Uh, so I'll, I'll stop here, Piali, and I'll, I'll take questions. Yeah, we have a uh, few questions here. The first one is, uh, how you feel is it easy to implement Agile in startup as compared to the traditional or service-based company, or you feel that Agile is a norm in startup? So definitely, Agile is definitely not a norm. Uh, you can still be successful even without Agile. Uh, and I don't want to compare uh, in terms of uh, the ease, ease, uh, easiness uh, of implementing Agile in a startup versus implementing it in a larger organization. Why I am saying that uh, it, it boils down to people, it boils down to the mindset. So if you are top level exec is first courageous enough to believe in agile and believe in the right agile methodology agile model that he or she wants to implement and then he or she is successfully influencing his particular line of uh, unit uh, it, it is one and the same compared to doing it in a smaller uh, agile uh, sorry smaller startup kind of uh, uh, because if everybody is aligned and lined up, or rather 90% of your team is line, aligned, uh, the size is not going to be a big, big factor in deciding success or failure of Agile implementing. Okay, uh, moving to the next question. Next, uh, we have, what is the best suited Agile framework for startup? <laughs> First of all, uh, to be very frank, and I think Piali knows this better. <laughs> uh, I, I hate frameworks. Uh, there is altogether a different topic that, that I can talk about. Uh, what I usually call is do it yourself. Uh, so because every organization, every team, every situation, every context is different. And, and I have strongly, uh, I, I strongly believe in that because I myself don't repeat this. This is the methodology. This is, let's say, the framework for <laughs> argument sake, right? That worked in a previous project. So let me just go and implement it in my ne next project. I never do that because I know for sure that uh, it, it's not going to work in a different context context just to just to give you an example uh, in one of the large scale uh, global uh, enterprise uh, implementation like like a, a transformation a web transformation implementation that i had managed uh, we moved into a three weeks release cycle from a two weeks release cycle uh, because when we were in a two weeks release cycle some of the constraints that I that that we saw uh, uh, we, we tried to fix all of that in that two week cycle 
but at one point we realized it it is not a problem with the specific aspects be it a dev be it a qa be it a, a, a business analysis or devops or anything like that it just that two weeks is too short for me to fit my product backlog broken down requirements into a meaningful cycle so let me go into a three week cycle and that worked fantastically well and till the point i handed it over back to the uh, parent organization uh, and till date they are following the three week cycle so can i just go blindly and implement two weeks release cycle doesn't work so let me go build a three weeks uh, uh, iteration the next project uh, that is the first failure that that uh, you know that you are getting into uh, sometimes one week release cycle will work fantastically well depends on your context depends on your uh, project setup uh, uh, so coming back to the original question i don't believe in frameworks and i i would want to uh, and again right that the reason i just listed out all these questions uh, is because i i did that homework uh, before and after i came in and most of these while they would look generic you can take and apply to any organization uh, it it starts with the specific context you are in uh, if if i go into a, new, a different startup i may or may not have all these questions i may have a completely different set of questions then that determines which variant uh, that's why i was very careful in choosing that uh, title uh, it is not a framework it is a variant that uh, you need to decide which will work in a start i hope you yeah. yeah. are hey, yeah now uh moving to the next question shridhar uh, next we have in certain startups the project manager role is reduced to a part time role but uh, will this model work doesn't project manager need to be there full time especially if there is fire fighting in the projects absolutely i mean yeah now now i think uh, there is more context to that uh, initial question yeah for that matter yeah for that matter right uh, any role uh, yeah i i am fully aware when i just use the qualifier any uh, that should not be part time especially in a startup environment uh, primarily because uh, the context would be changing too frequently uh, and that's because you would think that you you have done a fantastic uh, de- design fantastic solution but next morning yeah no i i need a very quick change into the specific product construct because that is what customer one or that is what the competition is is going ahead with so let's say if you have a part time ba in your team uh, or part time designer like the ux designer in your team who has this Signed a fantastic UI for you the previous day, and the next morning you come in, he he is into something else. Uh, that that that's again, it's going to be a blocker, or, or you need to wait for that person to be available to you next. And that is true even for a project manager. As a manager, uh, or rather, if you are implementing a Scrum uh, or a Agile variant in your uh, particular IT organization within the startup. Uh, the scrum master or or the agile lead that person needs to be full time so that he or she is uh, completely aware of all these dynamics and then he or she should be able to quickly adapt and react to it so big no to part time uh, roles especially the project managers or the agile uh, lead or or the scrum master role. Okay, so I'm moving to the next question, Shridhar. Uh, next, we have uh, how to become more agile and develop a startup culture as a major group. As a major, uh, what? Pialik, sorry, I missed the last yeah. one. Yeah, uh, as a major group. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, because it is like a very loaded question or uh, uh, this is like a too broader a question yeah. uh, <laughs> that's a very vague type <laughs> right i think probably uh, if if that same person is going to be there in the conference uh, i can have a chat and then try to share some of the uh, tips that i feel uh, would would be relevant or it it, it has to be more interactive uh, so that i can understand if there is a specific aspect that this person wants to understand how to build an agile culture uh, or how to build a startup culture uh, yeah uh, we I'll have probably. a second part of the question as well uh, let me read out that part and uh, what sure. variants of agile development methods can be utilized in bigger group not a smaller setup sure so please please wait for the conference i don't want to <laughs> preempt uh, the the points that i would, i mean it's not a big secret but like i said in the beginning uh, this is definitely not a dry run so i would want to address that uh, during the talk itself yeah or we can take it offline as well if uh, he is uh, sure, not sure. able to join we will take it offline okay sure yeah. definitely i i'll be happy to uh, explain it yeah okay so we have few more questions uh, let me see because we will not be able to answer all the questions in this defined time box so uh, two or three yeah. more questions and then we will close the session and you can send them over to me purely yeah, i can answer uh, as yes it yes uh, and that is for sure we will uh, take care of those questions offline uh, we can post on linkedin oh. we can post on twitter or they can connect to you directly as well yeah by all means yeah okay so uh, we have a longer question here i mean com combination of two three questions at the same time here is uh, okay. what, are, what are high risks involved in implementing agile in a startup how to mitigate them and uh, can we expect mm. immediate results implementing agile yeah i'll take the last question first uh, answer there is a big no uh, and and the reason being the size is uh, not a major factor in deciding uh, the success or failure uh, be it the agile implementation or be it any change that you want to bring in uh, i think the first part is uh, how easy it is to uh, implement agile yeah the first i, I would was, say relatively first part was what are high risks involved in implementing agile in a startup okay sure uh, honestly I, i don't see any any major risks or high risks in in uh, implementing agile uh, as long as you don't make that itself is like a prescriptive or a rigid one so you for example right what i mean by that is people just think and and which is sadly true uh, at at large if i do what people call as scrum meetings if i do retrospectives if i uh, somehow fit my requirements into a two weeks three weeks one week iteration uh, and if i do a little bit of uh, cicd and i am agile so that is uh, sadly uh, what is being followed if not majority in in uh, many many organizations and in, in many projects uh, in that situation yes it is risky uh, because people will completely get a different perspective and they will say agile is a failure on the other hand if you figure out these are the things that i'm going to implement in this context and for example how am i going to run my stand up on a daily basis right if your team is completely fresh uh, in the sense okay fresh out of college and uh, he, you don't have too many experts in your team then you need to fine tune your stand up in a way that they find it useful they find it effective and then they find it engaging also you cannot just go around and then do the usual uh, beta of okay what you did yesterday what you are planning to do today because they wouldn't know what what they are planning to do today you need to tell them please go do this because i need to 
be something else and then there is a business uh, uh, revenue aspect why i need it on a certain th- a certain date and then on a certain priority so on so forth so you you still need to follow the hygienic aspects as i call it but what is called hygiene in one agile team would be completely different from what is called hygiene in a complete uh, in a different agile team so short answer there are no high risks involved as long as you contextualize it as long as you pay it to the strengths of the team that you are implementing uh, and and again there is a, a whole concept of a positive or appreciative inquiry so i always believe in play to the strengths uh, where you are weak Businesses will automatically vanish, or they will get addressed. When when you are always playing it to the strengths, so make sure that you identify the strengths as individuals, as team, and then customize, fine tune the specific aspects of a job. And and please don't call rituals because when when the moment you say scam is a ritual, retrospective is a ritual. Uh, you you pretty much set it up for failure you need to contextualize and then you need to implement what would work in that specific sense okay so uh, the last question shridhar and uh, then we will uh, close the session okay yeah uh, here we have uh, in service based startup do we also train the customer side's resource if we are moving towards the agile way or is it something customer will spend on their own training i would recommend the first one uh, because for two reasons right one that will uh, ensure you are having a longer play longer run with the customer organization because you are putting your skin in the game you are not just being a vendor to the customer you wanted me to build a uh, a section of the whole product i built it in my own way in my own methodology and then i don't care whether uh, this gets implemented uh, in the larger product ecosystem that you are having uh, having said that you don't want to do all that for free first you go the extra mile you put the skin in the game by uh, doing agile enablement or by training the people on your customer organization for a certain period then you go and uh, have a meaningful conversation look i cannot do this for free all the time this is the investment that i had made you can do it in the beginning or you can do it uh, once once you have proven to a reasonable degree uh, going forward if you want to do it yourself or if you want my help to expand this extend this i'm happy to do it but that will come at a certain cost uh, like i said you you need to show uh, and and actually put your skin in the game uh, especially if you are a services start okay okay so uh, for now we are uh, closing the session shridhar we have few more questions left and uh, we will take it uh, offline who will be coming sure. to the conference that would be great and for the people who are not attending the conference we can uh, post the questions and answers on linkedin i think that would be a common platform and helpful for everybody definitely pyali Okay, so we are closing now. Thanks, uh, Shridhar. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, and I'm sure uh, your talk at the conference would be a very interesting one. I'm waiting for that. And uh, thank you, yeah, friends. Thank you, friends. Uh, thanks all for joining. Shridhar will be speaking at the Discuss Agile Day Chennai, scheduled on 20th of August, 2017. and i would like to invite you all to join us there and uh, i will be sharing all the conference details and agenda in the follow up email or you can just log on to discussagile.com/2017 and you will have all the details about the conference hoping to see you all there in the session thank you so much for joining in
thanks Piyali and thanks all who tuned in and, and listened. Thanks. Thanks, sir.